Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about the top universities to study quantitative finance. Now, quantitative finance is a very niche area, so we won't find many resources on quantitative finance as to where you can uh, put uh, programs on quantitative finance. However, there are quite a few websites that have done the ranking, but it's important to trust the reputed ones or the ones having good regard in the academic world. But I'll refer to the one that uh, is often regarded as one of the best source for uh, quantitative risk or financial risk, which is the risk.net. You can also find personal opinion on ranking on different social media platforms such as Quora or Stock Exchange or Reddit. Um, I use risk.net for this particular uh, presentation. Uh, they are highly regarded in the publication of finance, uh, risk management, uh, uh, macroeconomics, so on. Um, they have done ranking both on global level as well as on the uh, regional level. And that's important because most website, most other website do at a global level, but do not do at a regional level. And many other websites do not disclose how they have ranked these universities. So the parameters are not known, criteria is not known. So that is very important. Risk.net has um, clearly given the criteria using which it has done the ranking. So the criteria used here is 5% weight given to the average class size, 10% weight uh, has been given to acceptance rate, 10% again to percentage of offer holders who enroll, 5% ratio between lectures and students, which is again very important. Um, right, teachers to student ratio and 10% number of industry affiliated lectures over the total number of lecturers, 30% to employment rate in finance sector six months after graduation and that's important because what's important in quantitative finance is that whether you get employment, right, because not many people go for research career, um, such career, academic career, right, after doing a master's in quantitative finance. So it's important to know the uh, chances that you will end up getting a job after doing this course and then you have five percent weight to number of citations for the five most cite, uh, cited lecturers in the past four years so that's less important actually for you right you may be having very uh, wonderful professors but if the employment rate is not great and the fee is very high so you probably would like to avoid that university right and 25% weight is to average salary six months after graduation. Well, that's also important, right? How much money people get after doing uh, studies from that university. So almost 50% is given, 50% weight is, is given to um, employability. So that's very important, uh, especially in a program like quantitative finance. And they have taken other uh, similar programs into account, such as mathematical finance, financial engineering, etc. Uh, but they do not include programs like financial economics, economics, uh, such programs. Although many students studying financial economics or economics actually become financial engineer or quant uh, at a later point. Even people with maths, physics background uh, go on to become quants. Uh, many PhD in physics and maths uh, and statistics and engineering, computer science, uh, are quantitative analysts. In fact, there are more people from non-quantitative finance background working as quant than people coming from quantitative finance background. So the bottom line here is that you do not need to study quantitative finance to become a quant. But if you really are interested to learn it uh, formally in a university, then important to go to the good ones. And hence, ranking uh, is very important. You need to know the ranking. So these are the top 25 master's program. You can refer to this web page on risk.net. I've taken a snapshot of it. The top 10 ones uh, are Princeton University, the top one, followed by Newark University, Baruch College, University of California, Newark uh, University. Uh, yeah, I think there are two programs in Newark University. One at the mathematical, uh, in the mathematics school. The other one is at the engineering school followed by Imperial College of London, University of Toronto, Carnegie Mellon, Cornell University, North Carolina, University of Oxford. So most of these universities are from US and there are a few from Europe and one from Canada, right? And 
none from Asia or Africa. But that's not unexpected because the best universities in the world are in the US and the Europe. So that's not unexpected that most of these, in fact, all of these are from either US or Europe. Okay. Um, and as you see, the salary is given very high importance, high weightage in the ranking. Hence, you see in Princeton University, the starting salary six months after graduation is 120K, which is quite impressive. Uh, and it is the highest uh, in the top 10, right, when it comes to salary. Employment rate is 100%. But New York University is also close second, right, where employment is 100% and the starting salary is uh, 115K. That's also quite good. So, <clears throat> again, what's uh, important also this fee, right, and that's not given any importance here. And that's a weakness of this ranking because fee matters a lot for many students, especially from the developing countries cannot afford uh, high fees in many private universities in, in the US or Europe, right? And uh, Imperial College is the top one in the Europe, I guess, yes, uh, on overall ranking, yes, but maybe we have regional ranking where it might differ. Universities, Oxford is also there from the Europe, from UK basically, uh, but none from the EU region that's also interesting to note here right and when it comes to uh, US alone ranking you have Baruch College Boston University University of California Columbia University Cornell Fordham Georgia Tech John Hopkins University of Minnesota these are the top ones and as I said employability and salary has been given the highest weightage almost 50% weightage uh, given to that and that matters uh, the most for you right because it's not like any other degree, like in doing a physics master, maths master, engineering master, where you intend to go for a research career, right? It's also a lot more expensive degree. So what matters to you is employability or the salary that you will be getting after that. In Europe, you have these top uh, universities, City University of London, then Imperial College Business School, Imperial College London. So in Imperial College, you have two programs uh, running on quantitative finance and mathematical finance, then King's College, University of College of London, University of Oxford. These are top ones, right? Uh, all in the UK. And then in EU, Europe, you have ETH, Juris, University of St. Gallen, University of Paris, University of Bologna, University of Florence, University of Amsterdam, University of uh, Erasmus, University of Rotterdam, Vienna University of Economics and Business. So th these are the top schools in, in the Europe. In the Asia, there are not uh, many good schools actually in Asia. You have Monash University, uh, University of Technology, Sydney in Australia, City University of Hong Kong, uh, and yeah, I think three universities in Hong Kong are also in the in the list. But you, uh, the another weakness of this ranking is that um, you don't have any university from Africa in this list, uh, none from Middle East, none from India. You know, although many students from Middle East, um, from Singapore, from India, from many other African countries such as South Africa, uh, are working as quants, but they do not have any universities listed out in the list of top universities. And not many people can afford to go abroad and study. So I think it's highly recommended that you also have ranking for these countries, at least. So uh, if you have questions, let me know. Thanks.